Gemini's, welcome. This is your end of the year 2021 reading. This is what I call the big reading. Here what I've done is reproduce the transit in the sky using the major kana. And above are the ten uh, planets, uh, eight planets in the two orbs, the sun and the moon. And here with the devil Capricorn, these we have a stellium in Capricorn. You lucky bastards, I just noticed in your eighth house. We'll have to get into that. So, boy, it's been tough, this energy. Uh, this is the Venus uh, here. The Empress represents Venus, and judgment is going to be Pluto. If we kind of see what this looks like, we'll put them all together. And you have the sun at seven degrees. It's here now. Uh, and today, Mercury is now actually conjunct along with the Venus and Pluto. Uh, you kind of get a feel for what's going on. Best we see that devil card on top there. Uh, I just said, draw me out. The first thing I noticed when I was thinking about your charts here, and, and then I'll do a tarot reading on top of this uh, when, when I finish here with uh, going through the what I have with the um, transit cards. So, and hopefully, you know, even just looking at the cards here, and I, I love this, the Ethereal Visions Illuminate Tarot. I mean, you don't know anything about tarot. I think you just look at the card intuitively. They're so uh, uh, evocative. Um, so, uh, Sagittarius, you know, I'm Sagittarius. Uh, Mars, I, I think is, uh, in general, it's a lighter energy than what's been going on. Um, it's Mars, of course, action is represented by the tower in tarot. Uh, Sagittarius is temperance here. So uh, it's kind of like giving ourselves a break, taking it easy. Maybe, you know, get some time off from work for the holidays. And I mean, this could be anything from depending on how you function to kicking back and uh, getting lit and watching Netflix to, you know, uh, going out uh, for a uh, a day on the beach or a backpacking trip into nature, what I used to do when I had the physical ability. Um, it It's a little bit to me of kind of like fucking off energy. And I love it because everything here is really hard. It's been really tough. Um, and, and Mars has been busy, I think, you know, um, taking care of business. Uh, it, we had a conjunction in Libra with Mercury at a conjunct in the sun, Mercury in the sun again, uh, in Scorpio, um, and now it's Sag, it's all kind of on its own. Um, so I think there's been for you and for everyone some kind of discussion going on uh, amongst yourselves, <laughs> as it were. Uh, and then for you, that's in the fifth and sixth house. And not sure i don't have your i'm looking here more at gemini rising so i have something to go on with the houses um so it should be we can be a lot more accurate for gemini rising if you're gemini sun moon or venus um just kind of it still could resonate take that into account we just won't have the uh you know we won't have the houses exactly right and the house is uh, where the rubber meets the road you know but he's like what's the house mean it's uh, the planets bring the energy. It's kind of filtered through the signs to grossly oversimplify it. But for me, a sad, you think it's the best way to understand it, you know? <laughs> and then the houses is here on Earth. How does it play out, you know? You might have all this Aries energy of the self and do it and just do it and don't worry about other people. Um, but then it's all in the fourth house and... Um, it, thrown into there, maybe your your sun is conjunct the moon, and it's in the fourth house, and so you might be this Aries person that cares more about cooking and nurturing other people than about fighting them and kicking their ass. You know? And or you know, it's, it's why people it's it's sad or funny. I don't know. Uh, you know, you got an Aries, and they're not impulsive and an asshole, and people and they go well. Astrology must be bullshit because I'm not like that. You know, all I want to do is nurture people and cook good food for them, give them big hugs. <laughs> you know, even, even though I'm a dude, it's like, I don't know, I feel like I'm their mother. And so they go, well, you know, astrology doesn't make any sense. Well, it just devil's in the details. <laughs> and this is obviously where we had the, 
you know, the energy. It's not just that you have four planets there, well, an orb and three planets. But you, this uh, Venus and Pluto conjunction is just going to be tough. And I, I got the feeling today, maybe, um, with Mercury conjuncting with Venus, you could almost think Mercury's the messenger, right? And Mercury works for the sun everybody works for the sun the sun is the king or the queen is the kingdom um you know um so in, in mars does too mars always a little more headstrong um you know um mercury um is in the know so something's whatever's been going on with this venus and pluto stuff for you guys and in the eighth house i mean it's it's like a double town. I mean, it's already all about you know um, a cult and culted anything and so tarot perfect astrology perfect. Um, it's also about shadow stuff. It's also about you know darkness. Pluto, I don't know with astrology, it's all there and Pluto represents uh, the dark side. It also represents you know wild animals eating you alive. It represents horrible mangled car crashes and mangled bodies. It's it's, um, you know, because that's a part of life. You know, you don't have to focus on it and what have you, but it's there and that's Pluto. You know, Saturn too, but that's Pluto, that darkness. Um, a lot of the way that this could play out, conjunct Venus, issues around a sibling, finding out something. Um, it's it kind of an emphasis on the female. Uh, this is a time where maybe with Mercury, maybe today, maybe right around today, tomorrow, yesterday, um, you you find out something about the family that's kind of dark here, you know, somehow. Um, it could be about yourself. Definitely could be about a relationship. Uh, it definitely what's going on here, particularly, again, with Mercury, thoughts, communications. It's like us in our own minds talking. That's the number one thing Mercury is. I think everybody talks about communications. It's mainly the mind, you know. What's, how, what's the nature of the mind? How does it uh, function? You know, along with the moon, but um, here it's going to be focused on this this stuff. You know, working out the shadow stuff. If you if you never want to go in the basement, Gemini's maybe not uh, so much like Libra. I'm sad. I don't really so much either. Well, it's kind of an adventure for me, but you know, it's like, we're not we're not all Scorpios. We're not all eight thousand people. But right now, the energy's there, and it's as if, like, you're in, in the kitchen, there's a basement door, <laughs> and the devil's saying, come on, come on, let's go, let's go down the basement. You're going to have to see what's down there, and you see what's down there. We're like, I don't think I'm going down there, devil. You know, but it's bugging us. It's like, look, look, uh, lift up, look under the rug. Look under the rug right now, Jim and I. I want to look under the rug. It's never good. Hey, you know what, devil? It's never really worked out well for me when I looked under the rug. It's just disgusting, really. And no thank you. Uh, but nevertheless, that's what we're dealing with. Um, and probably my opinion as an astrologer, of course, is like the the planets uh, can advise us on where best to place our energy. If I see this stellium Capricorn in my eighth house, I'm going to have to say, now they understand things like, okay, spirit, you want me to go into the basement, so I'm going to go into the basement, you know, because I know you want me to go there. I can see that. I got a st stellium <laughs> and the Venus-Pluto uh, conjunction in my eighth house. Um, and then today with Mercury, maybe that's when you kind of find out what it is, um, you know, that's going on with this shadow stuff for you personally. I think with Mars, it's also what we call in conjuncts, 150 degree angle again in Sag. It's kind of checked out. This is to Uranus. Um, I, it's like that's the higher mind, and it's already in your 12th house if you're in a Gemini rise, and most likely in your 12th. You could have a split house, but I'm just looking at whole houses so I have something to work with. And um, it. I get the idea like there's a element of the mind being turned off and with Mars kind of fucking off and Sagittarius maybe this is like you you really just I make love run go over a long run go out and play go ride a bike um just or it, it could even like just go see a movie like you never go see a movie 
go see a movie and just check out, turn your phone off and watch. Make it like a stupid movie, not something serious. You're not going to Schindler's List, you know. You're going just for something that's funny, rom-com, whatever. It just it completely lets you space out, you know. And and I even think like at this point, probably spacing out might not even be hurtful. Um, and it might just help you connect with what's going on, sort of with that Mars and conjunct Uranus, like by. It's sort of by disconnecting, I don't know, ironically or something, you end up connecting. Um, a really big thing, now I have to figure the moon when I do this, so I can't kind of figure on the time when I'm doing the reading. You know, I'm going to do this reading, and, and I'm going to do Cancer. So I, where I pegged it, we're going to go with 29 uh, degrees of a Libra. Libra represented by justice, moon is the high priestess. And, you know, think of those two together, you know, the highest, the higher self, the spiritual self, the pure intuition, alignment with the soul, this high priestess who, the high priestess who advises the emperor and the empress, you know, and then, and it's aligned with justice now. And the moon, two and a half days, it's a punch, but it says a lot, you know, it can be a trigger, of course, emotionally, uh, for these things as we go along. Um, the thing it is, it's exactly trying to Jupiter, also at 29, in Aquarius. This is the big deal. Um, tomorrow is the big day. Jupiter goes uh, into Pisces, and that's going to be amazing. And um, that's going to be a bang in your 10th house. Um, so you might have some really good things popping for you in terms of your public image, career, how you want to relate to the world. This Venus energy is not always about love. That's too can be about, you know, how we relate to the world, what we value, uh, what we value in ourselves and all of this um, kind of energy coming up with Pluto. And it could be some transformation going on. You know, the thing about Saturn, it's, it's exactly square to Uranus today. Uranus represented by the fool appropriately. Uranus bringing that erratic energy of change and disruption the ruling electricity it's kind of a pulsing you know um, Saturn is relentless marching mechanical energy not saying it's bad I'm just saying it's steady. I like Saturn but like everything just it's a two and a half year cycle. I'm working with someone doing your chart however we're doing it natal or transit or sinistry i'm still going to go in each other. i want to look back at a couple saturn cycles especially when the last hit one of your angles and i like to talk to people about it, say hey, just ask them what was happening on this date and you're just like oh my god why do you how did you know to ask that was when the because it really helps you get a bead saturn it's like the real world saturn represented by the world in tarot here exactly square the fool so jupiter though is the wild card. It's at 29 degrees another reason why i think you could get something today you might call this a download if you want you get a download today download last night something came unconscious even you know this is that kind of thing that comes in from uh something esoteric from meditation again could be just out having a good time relaxing um you know in whatever way that is for you and then it allows, uh, you know, your mind to kind of free up and you just sort of maybe just come into alignment. You know, Jupiter 29 doesn't have to be bad. It's just sort of summing up whatever it is it's been doing for us um, as it transited for you, your ninth house, you know, of uh, religion, belief systems, higher education. Um, and it was kind of a challenging energy going through there. I felt with Saturn there too. So probably just going to get a lot lighter now. Um, and you may have, uh, in the last, you know, year, say, uh, maybe you did come to some kind of conclusions about uh, belief systems. And you always, I always include self-belief systems. I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. I'm a... I'm never a good lover, never a good lay. I'm never smart enough. Whatever it is, enough, not enough that we believe, that's like a belief system too. And sometimes it, that could come into the ninth house. 
Um, and you know, we can almost make a religion out of it. I think with the tarot reading too, we'll really look at Capricorn and here with the devil. It was, it's fun getting more advice for what's going on with you there. Um, with Neptune in your 10th house, if you're that Gemini rising, you know, that's like a forever, it's just been there forever. Um, it, it likely is in terms of work, if you've had difficulty, this could be difficulty holding on to work, work that comes and goes, uh, something not being real and steady, um, being non-existent even. Um, now it might be doing a little bit better as it, it gets into the last degrees of Pisces there. Um, and really, if you're doing the kind of work that deals with uh, the unconscious, with the spiritual realm, a pure theoretical realm, emotion like therapy, for instance, your therapist, something, um, that would go well there. It'd be the, probably the most natural fit, you know, for that kind of energy. The more real something is, uh, the more Saturnine, the more worldly something is, um, you know, the less it would fit in, into that 10th house, you know? Um, like, I don't know, building houses, <laughs> for instance, you know, or, or, or anything like that. Um, and then with Uranus being in your 12th house, what I say, and you'd see the hair font here, that also is, it has to do with belief systems, but this is where you're really settled. Uh, where you're fixed here in your energy. Um, you know, someone asks you, what are you? And you say, without thinking, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Presbyterian. I think it could be quite literal. And the square with Saturn here, the world, and with the fool is really a big deal. Right here today, tomorrow, it's coming to kind of a uh, head um, and for you, you know, this is the energy from your eighth house over, um, this is the energy, I'm sorry, from your twelfth house and over to your ninth house. Um, and it could be, that's so many subtle things there. It's, uh, it, it's deep, deep adjustments to the way we believe, you know. I don't know. I've, I've always said the quickest way to, to transform is through your belief systems. So if you can transform your belief systems, um, you can literally change everything like that. And that could be a lot of what's going on, but it's coming, the attention's been all year. And with Uranus there, especially right now with Mars in conjunct, um, it might be something that it's hard for you to connect with. And, um, you know, in other words, hard for you to connect with consciously. Um, so things that come to your mind may have come almost unconsciously from fantasies, from literally from dreams, from resonating with something you heard in a little mem and it sort of speaks to you in a way that's not you know, left brain, um, direct communication. Um, and the moon, tomorrow will be in Scorpio. So I don't think it's a accident that this, anything's an accident at all, but especially with tarot reading, but that this came out at 29 degrees um, um, Libra here. So uh, it, it, it just feels like there's something kind of ready to give and this kind of download coming for you or kind of a summation that's what i want it's end of the year reading and so for this end of the year with what's going on it'd be hard to think that you didn't have some kind of fundamental adjustment or change um, to your belief systems you know um somehow let me see what we get when we do the tarot reading. What I want to do is as I go along for each sign, I'm going to pull only from the uh, court cards and from the minor arcana. And I've already shuffled. Just want to put a little energy on them. 
I go there and pull a card each for each one of the signs, starting with Sag over here. And Sag is going to be your um, Ace of um, Page of Cups, you know, facing kind of into the reading. You know, facing in towards you. I mean, not really into the reading. Okay, let me see what I get. This is for Capricorn energy. Your King of Swords. Let's see what I get for the Aquarius energy. Page. Page of Swords. And we'll put all this together in a minute. And... <laughs> You know, nobody's really looking into the reading. Finally, this Knight of Cups here is looking into the reading. And it's lining up with Neptune. So that's very interesting for you guys. Uh, that's kind of engaging emotionally. And taking action too. And then I have the Queen of Pentacles. This is going to be with your Uranus energy. And the Page of Swords two pages um it's a kind of contemplative and internal it kind of goes along just in my general feeling is about this year being about this internal very deep sort of uh, summation uh, um, construction definition defining of your um, belief systems in some way um Looking away emotionally with this page of cups. Well, it is kind of taking your mind off things emotionally here. Which, you know, you could say normally maybe that's not a good thing. I mean, taking your mind off something emotionally with something else is a definition of like a toxic codependent behavior. It's like not dealing with your own feelings. But I just get the feeling here. Um, it, it's something that it, you need to do. Like you need a break somehow. So you maybe keep this as, like everything as healthy as can be. And with the King of Swords coming in here underneath this devil, it's like really taking control. You know, Swords, that's your energy. This could be you showing up in the reading as the King of Swords. So this is you, but this maybe with this belief system, what happens is that it, it really makes you stronger and firmer and solid in yourself and so when you look at someone you can really look them in the eyes and you 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 know yourself you don't have any questions about yourself anymore there's a real uh, command to the king of swords and with there he's uh, with gemini being all about communication this is someone who's kind of mastered communication this is the energy of someone that cannot say something because they're that wise. They've, they've mastered it to that degree. You know, even the ego is in check. There's a real balance, and it, it's a really good to see this. This is your eighth house. You know, if there's anything here that you want to kind of get a, a control of and get command of, it's right here. Um, and so it, whatever happened to you during this... Um, let's see if I get something clarify this five of swords let me clarify the king of swords so i'm going to say whatever's happened to you with this eighth house energy uh, you might have settled it with like really an argument um, this could also just be negative thinking but whatever it is look at him again very contemplative it's in your mind you over this maybe year you spend a lot of time you know fighting with yourself focusing on the shadow stuff struggling maybe you ended up fighting with other people um, but you got, this is what you got out of this. You got the King of Swords. You had to, like, to get to be the King of Swords, apparently you had to, tell, you had to fight to get there. You know, a lot of us had to fight to get to where we are. You know. I'm clarifying with your minor arcana, with your court cards here, in the Eight of Wands. So, even more energy. It's like really uh, giving a lot of energy. I got to just say fucking off. And I want to say it like that just to be clear. It's like it. it's a page. It's young. I mean, you've been with the tower. You can just think of it, the tower and temperance. Temperance again bringing that energy of the ninth house. 
it's uh, it, maybe you've been bearing down on it and bearing down on it. And when you get the Page of Cups and the Eight of Wands, it's like really put your heart into fucking off. <laughs> I say other than that, you know. Um, look, even a soldier at war, you know, World War II, we're fighting for a very good existence, arguably, right? They get some time off. They, they know they got to give them some time off once in a while, right? Call it R&R, &R, and they get to go fuck off for a week or two, and then they go back to killing and being killed. So if they can fuck off for a minute, yeah, I think we can. What the hell, man? Clarifying your page of wands. This is a nine of cups. Man, I love this right now. So think of this too. Jupiter's at 29. We're summing up that whole year-long transit in Aquarius through your ninth house, whole belief system thing. And once again, you have the king of swords here. This is the nine of cups, you know. This is the a happy bachelor. You know, I, I just, I don't, you know, maybe when we get to this page of cups we'll see some love coming in here and maybe with the page of swords but so far it's so internal but you, you, I think it was Aries you know I think it well, I just ended up saying like uh, good good job you did you really mastered the year or something I get that feeling here so far um, and emotionally you probably right now you should be feeling this a sense of like emotionally whole emotionally self-contained um, it's when you have the nine of cups and then you get the ace of cups when you have the ten of cups so you're in the perfect position and the eight of swords is clarifying this knight of cups here and that's again that Neptune energy and Neptune it's recently gone direct and it's been because it's in Pisces it's winding up to go into that third deacon now. It's really going to get serious now with Neptune. And I think probably better. Like put it this way. Whatever havoc Neptune has wreaked in your 10th house. Hit my 7th house. It's like a ton of bricks. But so subtle. Like it doesn't really announce itself like you know Saturn. It's just kind of slowly you get to see that it's having a profound effect on things. You know. So when it goes direct, a lot of times what happens, it's like the rose-colored glasses come off. You get this huge reality check. You know, and it happened not long after Saturn got going back direct. And um, so you, and you've always got this Saturn uh, square Uranus. That's going to bring up some kind of tension and conflict one way or another. It's what it's supposed to do. It's what gets us to change and grow. So that's what this is. It's thinking and rethinking and trying to figure out something because of this emotional uh, energy that you have with Neptune here. And it's probably just, it, we can be kind of hard on ourselves with this aid of uh, swords energy. And I always say with this is like, it's also self-isolating the aid of swords. You got this uh, knight here is maybe reach out emotionally to someone for support. Because Eight of Swords is often us sitting alone and we can't figure it out no matter how hard we try. And it's kind of eating us alive. And if, sometimes if you just had someone that cared about you, has a little bit of wisdom, knows you a little bit, you know, they just could say like, oh, dude, it's just this. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, how could I not have saw that? You know, would you just too close to it? And we're in this Eight of Swords energy. We tend to just stew in our own juices and not reach out. So why I say. And then we're looking at Uranus. Here we got that square. <laughs> uh, mm. Now, this is the iconic card that means tarot, unfortunately. Um, it is Remember Thoughts yeah, with Swords. So uh, it kind of goes with the Eight of Swords here. Uh, and it, with the Queen of Pentacles, you're you're being asked to be really solid, the most solid you can be um, in yourself. Um, and I think this is kind of like uh, what you want to reach for. And with Uranus, you know, it could bring this. Like what would happen is it's going to bring some kind of energy to you. Or not energy, it's going to bring a dynamic to you, to your life here. 
um, just something happens, how Uranus does, something happens, something uh, falls out of the sky, it could be anything. Um, often it can be something difficult with your 10th house emphasis. Might This could be where during the year may had difficulty with a job or lost a job or something like that. Um, and that's what this is coming in. And maybe part of what this whole year is, is um, coming to grips with this. And again, it looks like you are because you have this emotional energy, the Nine of Cups, and that's where Saturn is too. It's going to be there for another year, or year and a half. It's not going anywhere. And if you're in this energy, I mean, Saturn loves this energy, Nine of Cups. It loves the Happy Bachelor. It's solid, you know. Um, not someone's out like, uh, you know, uh, buying things because they're emotionally uh, uptight or uh, something like that. You know, someone's kind of got got it together, and believe me, I think that suits Saturn very well. And with this page of cups uh, here at the end of the reading, this is where I get the feeling that you might have someone coming into your life here. Because now this is where the moon is, and it's and it's going to leave Libra in a minute. But I just got to tell you now, we're going to a tarot read. This is not about the astrology for a minute. And this could be Libra here with this page of swords. And the way they're looking back, and then you see the three of pentacles in the ethereal visions illuminated tarot really emphasizes cooperation over work but it is the good worker card it's very positive i got the feeling something's going to go on at work or something to do with work you might work online this could all happen there but there's some kind of collaboration too and there's this person that's going to come along and they're going to be this air sign person possibly a libra person sun moon rising and venus think that now um, and it's going to be some kind of, they're going to, the way they're looking back here, it's going to be like, hey, you know, what, or, uh, do you do, do so-and-so code? Oh, well, I do this over here. Maybe we can work together and we could uh, do something. Uh, if you are someone saying, well, if you help me with this, then I'll help you with that. Um, this could also be some kind of business arrangement. If, you, if it's not interested in love, it's pretty much the same thing. Just call, call it a flat-out business arrangement. It's someone kind of looking back over the shoulder and going, you know what, I think I think we could work together, uh, Jim and I. And, you know, it would be a real a solid, I believe it would be something solid with this Three of Pentacles. You know, I, I really like that. Uh, we would call kind of the end of the reading, end of the year. This could be something that happens in January, you know, it's the end of the year reading, or something that happens right now. Hey, Get an invite, what the hell, go to the New Year's Eve party. Always be careful right now with this Venus and even you know, for the next couple till March or something, Venus still tied up with the devil and it's uh, just a really good time to be extra careful. You know, Don't go leaving your drinks at the bar unattended while you go to the restroom. Um, and be real extra careful, you know, with driving and all that good stuff. So thank you guys. Uh, if you can think of somewhere to share this, please do. Um, if you like it, please hit the like. It helps a lot. I'd love to hear your comments. If you have a question about your transits, I'll try to answer it. If you want, send me a message here. On, on, make a comment. And do uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, appreciate it, guys.